All right, hey peeps, we're gonna go ahead and hit this off with uh part 17 of what if Deku had a Minecraft quirk. Um, pretty much on the last part, we just left off with everyone killing the Ender Dragon, getting the backstory of the Nether. So now we're going to talk about uh what they do after they get the required required tools to help out your boy Charles. All right, so. After they do that, they go in deep and they pretty much come out and they they just basically help your boy out. But let's get into let's get into more of a um <clears throat> how do I put this? Um once they get there, they get there, they immediately make different types of materials due to the simple fact of how everything's backwards, because diamonds are the weakest material, gold it's one of the stronger. Gold is one of the stronger materials and shit like that, okay? But before we completely finish this, go down the description. If you can, donate anything helps. A dollar, a penny, puts food in my stomach. It also helps me make better content because if I'm not worried about being hungry and I have money, I'm able to buy more games. I'm able to potentially buy better equipment. So it's just like an overall thing. So yeah, and my... Instagram is down below, God underscore DK. If you need another social platform to reach me, let me know. And if y'all want my Snapchat, let me know for that too. So they get there. They're they're in the ether. They're like, yee, where's our boy Charles? After a while of searching, they see the boy's Charles. He looks odd, but they don't question. They immediately jump off with their electrolytes because they eventually went back into the portal, got that shit, which was not an easy episode, but we don't skip that minor detail. They got that shit. They dip out and fall through and they're chilling. They got their boy back. Everyone's good. Everything's great. But, 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 but there's one thing. James is like, all right. Now for y'all to hold up the end of y'all bargain. So now they need help. James wants help with beating the, um, He wants help beating the three-headed wither. So, Charles, DK, and James all willingly help, but Charles looks a little younger than he should be. Since time works in reverse, they're a lot younger, or at least Charles is a lot younger than he should be, so he's like, we'll help. Long story short, after a brutal fight of nearly everyone nearly dying... They do successfully help James, and he gets the item he wants. And everyone's like, so what did you get? He's like, hey, you asking a lot of questions. Now, after all of that is said and done, this is pretty much where the peaceful times come. Uh, Charles heads back with them, and Charles is basically almost like a seven, eight, eight-year-old, give or take. His voice is squeaky. He doesn't have a deep voice. Um... He still retains most of his knowledge, but yeah, foreshadow. Um, so that's so they just go back. Charles go back to his fishing. Uh, DK goes back to making potions in his thing, while Deku is just back there trading, herding the cows, and doing all sorts of stuff like this. Okay. So with that being said, <laughs> mm, they just chill out, vibe out, and just do what they didn't do normally: explore caves. Fight different beasts down below, and that's pretty much it. While James is over there in his own section, he cuts off connections to their their base. Um, not their base, but he lets them have their little bunker and leaves them some diamonds, just for a small bit of appreciation and a couple of stack, a couple of stacks of blocks of iron, just to show his thanks. Okay, and yeah, and then they never hear from James again. Meanwhile, they're all helping help villain, different abandoned villagers, getting them out of the mine shaft, helping them become normal uh, people again, not become zombie villagers anymore. Put some defenses up for them. They have to fight off a wave of um, uh, raiders. They fight them off. They help multiple villages. They end up connecting the villages due to the iron that was given to them. Charles eventually finds a horse, and he's like, I'm going to name you Jumpy. Every Deku, James, and DK, well, De James is far away, but everyone just feels a damn, a cold shiver down their spine when he says that, because apparently he might not remember everything. 
And they're like, oh, no. Yeah, this was one of the baby horses that was bred to perfection. And after a while, they just eat, train, sleep, and just keep venturing onwards until they, you know, get a good conquer. They've never seen Hero Brian up until this day. And this is where things get scary. One day, and it wasn't raining on this day, but one night, things were happening very uniquely, okay? Patches of the ground were disappearing. Um, hell and all sorts of stuff was raining down upon them. And they were really confused. Parts of their house was getting deleted, if you may. And it looked like the world was dying, or as they called it, the world was crashing. And Deku was terrified. Charles and D uh, DK was like, oh, we've seen this all. We've seen this one too many times before. We know what's going on. This is when they basically say, anytime this does happen, they're about to lose all their, not memories, but they're going to lose all their progress they've made, and they're going to have to restart over from new. The terrain's going to be different. The environment is going to be different. Everything's about to be different. Um, real quick, in-game logic would be the service crashing and the service starting to glitch out. And so they're just like, oh, no. So a big void starts opening up. Basically, the world itself is eating itself. And they're just like, we got to go. If we get caught by that, we don't know what happens, but we don't want to find out. James sends a messenger of some sort saying, hey, boys, the world is doing that thing again. Y'all might want to get ready. So they basically grab all what they can. They grab the total amount of dyings they have. They grab every single bit of items and things and jingam things. And they're just like, vroom, 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 as things are getting deleted. Charles is on his horse. Uh, Deku's uh, flying with his electrolytes and Boss is on a minecart. Don't ask how he's on a minecart. He said he figured out something. He is just going. So everybody's going at their maximum speed, just trying to escape this world from leaving. They see James off in the distance at a really high point, just sitting there flying up in the air with his lecture, like saying, hey, the end day is coming, my friends. The end day is here. And they're like, damn, this nigga's crazy. And then the world, the world, the world, it consumes everybody, even James. that was really high up. And then blackness, darkness. Everyone's like, who's still alive? DK says, Charles, I'm good. Wait, where's my horse? No, no, choppy. And all you hear everyone but Charles has a silent tear pop out, but since it's dark, no one sees it. Knowing his horse, Jumpy, was gonna die. But then. <laughs> They're immediately plopped back into a whole nother world, confused, lost, scared, and damaged and beaten. And they're just all down on the ground, but a weird portal opens up, and they're like, we thought so. And uh, um, Charles sees a horse. Hey! We're like, everyone looks. Please don't name him Jumpy. I'm going to name you Jumpy. Oh, my God. God, 0.26, them, uh, that portal opens up looking kind of weird, but anytime any of the other ones stepped near it, they knew they would get eviscerated. It was just like a subconscious thing, but Deku walked towards it and realized he was getting pulled into it, and he was like, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to go. No, no. But it was okay. They all looked at him and said, buddy, it's time for you to wake up. Deku, confused, scared. It's like, what do you mean? Look, dog, you wasn't really meant to be here in the first place. Maybe it was some weird phenomenon, but you probably shouldn't have even met any of us. We're trapped here or until we get out. But you can go live a full life on your own, okay? So go do that, all right, buddy? You you do the best you can do and be the best you, you can be. 
as Deku is slowly getting dragged and dragged and dragged into this portal, screaming, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And then Charles, DK, and James all grabs Deku. Han, buddy, remember everything we've taught you. Remember everything we've shown you. Remember everything. Don't forget us, okay? Do what you got to do to live. Do what you got to do to be survived. Be the best hero you can be. And Deku, with that, had tears flowing at his eyes. Just like, what hero? What is a hero? And they all looked at him and said, goodbye, Izuku, Midoriya. Be the best person you can be. And then the second that happened, things went black for Deku. And then he bust out crying, crying louder than he's ever cried. But then Bakugo looks at him and says, why are you crying? What's wrong? He's just crying and crying and crying and crying. And then he opens up his eyes and he realized something. His quirk has activated. And he realized something. Was that all fake? Or was that part of my quirk? And then he realized he's back where he was born at. He's only four years old, but has an experience of someone that's lived multiple years of life. And that's where we end off. Thank everybody for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it. And on a complete side note, I want all of y'all to take into account. If you've made it to this part, this is the payoff. All of this was just to build up to Deku having Minecraft abilities. But instead of just doing it regular, why don't I go about a backhanded way? You know what I'm saying? Let's make it to where he, he went through experiences. So when we talk about stuff, everyone's like, oh, I remember. Or, oh, oh, I get that. Or, oh, so if y'all like that, please like the video. If you love the way I do this shit, sub, do all that good shit. Don't forget to check that description down below. And guys, I love y'all.